Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Battlefield Hardline single player. Now, if you haven't played the single player yet and you don't want the storyline ruined for you, I suggest you stop watching this video now. Now, the game starts off with you playing the character Nick Mendoza. You're a relatively rookie detective and you got partnered up with Kai to sort of investigate a new drug scene. The early missions serve as tutorials showing you how to flash your badge at uh, the enemy characters. They'll usually drop their guns, hold their place, you have to keep your weapon pointed at them then you can walk up and handcuff them if you choose you can also just go ahead and just straight up shoot them the game doesn't really penalize you for doing that although it won't give you points for shooting bad guys now if you get a lot of points in single player it'll unlock more and more powerful weapons for you to get from weapon crates as you progress through the level so if you're not interested in points you can easily just pick up guns off of the bad guys which will then unlock those weapons for you regardless so points aren't really necessary if you choose you can just go through this game guns blazing, killing everybody, giving no regard for police procedure. Now if you try to your hardest to make this game feel realistic by flashing your badge at guys and sneaking up behind them and tasing them and trying not to use lethal force to take down the enemies, at first it can almost feel like a realistic game, not accounting for the fact that you never call for backup. Even when trying to raid warehouses with 30 guys in them with fully automatic weapons, for some reason you and your partner always seem to think that it's better for you guys to just go in alone and deal with the situation. Now even if you do try and play your way through this game in a serious manner, the missions and the levels get out of hand relatively quickly. You'll even find yourself shooting the cannon of an AC-130 at one point and shooting down helicopters with an M1 Abrams, because Nick Mendoza is totally trained in how to operate those vehicles. So at that point in the game, the reality of the situation goes completely out the window. Yet they still try and hit you with this sort of serious, somber storyline of police corruption and drug dealing. In many ways, it feels like they're taking the storyline from something like The Wire, a very realistic cop drama about drugs and crime and stuff like that, but then mixing in the action from 24. And granted, this is a video game, so you're supposed to have some crazy over-the-top action, it just doesn't really fit together. Especially since this game really hits you over the head with the fact that you are a detective early on. You're looking for clues and evidence, trying to tie things together, although that's not really your responsibility as much as it is to just find the clues and then the storyline will explain everything for you. In in fact, your cell phone seems to know where all the clues are already. You'll walk into a room, you'll hear a buzzing sound, the vibrator on your cell phone is going off, and you pull out the cell phone and it basically says, scan the room, look for evidence. You look around the room with your cell phone scanner, a nifty little police app, and uh, it just highlights all the evidence in green for you. Now I get that this is a battlefield single player game. It's supposed to be fast paced and action packed, so you can't slow it down by actually making players look for evidence or put clues together on their own. That would wouldn't really cater to the Battlefield audience as much, so I kind of understand the reason for them making the evidence finding extremely easy and straightforward. However, I feel like perhaps making a detective style game a Battlefield single player was the wrong direction to begin with. I think it would make much more sense if you were a member of a SWAT team rather than a detective. Now if you're willing to look past the surreal aspects of this game, like your super cell phone that can scan for evidence, tag bad guys, uh, has access to a criminal database so it can tell you who any of the bad guys are at any time and also the fact that there's a mini map in the lower left corner of the screen showing you the location of all the bad guys and where they're looking. This seems a little bit weird in a detective game where not some sort of future soldier that has some crazy radar built into his mech suit. I mean we're a detective here so why do we have a mini map showing us the location of all the enemies? But if you are willing to look past some of those more obviously silly aspects of the single player game, well, what are you left with? You still have kind of a linear story narrative and you have incredibly predictable AI. I think if you're gonna have a linear single player game, you have to have incredibly good AR that are challenging, make you have to rethink how you're gonna play through each mission. And although I did die a few times while playing the single player, it was mostly because I was just getting way too ambitious with my abilities instead of trying to take cover or sneak around a level, I would just run right in front and center and start shooting. Most of the time I would actually win. Every now and then I would mess up, but the AI is incredibly predictable. 
you just alert them to your presence on the map, most of the time they'll just walk over to where you are one at a time and you can take them out one after the other. I got so bored with how easy it was to kill the AI in this game that I would just periodically run through entire levels using nothing but my taser to take down the enemies. You have to get in really close, like 10 feet or closer, yet entire squads of guys with M16s and AKs couldn't take me out as I'm running between different bits of cover tasing people. Now it might sound like I'm being a little harsh on this single player and I should mention that I'm not a huge fan of single players in general. I've got to play a really good single player game for me to enjoy. It's got to have good characters, good story, good gameplay. It's really got to be firing on all cylinders for me to even consider it a decent single player. But at the same time I think there's plenty of good single player games out there and for some reason developers keep sort of leaning towards this much more cinematic style way of presenting their single player games, taking you out of control of your character and sort of just pushing you through this narrative that's going to end up in the same way every single time, making it feel less like a game and more like a movie. And as soon as you start entering that more cinematic aspect of game design, you start competing with films. I would have much rather watched the movie Heat uh, again than play the single player through because that's got some good acting, it's got a good storyline, it's an engaging film, and the single player really just kind of let down in many of those areas. One really telling thing about the writing is that there's many moments in this game that I'm just like banging my head against the table saying, why are you doing this? Why are you trusting these people? Why are you behaving in this way? You're playing a character that's making decisions that you can't control, and I hated the decisions he was making. There's a moment in the narrative where Kai and uh, another cop are basically suggesting that you take money from a crime scene, and your character decides not to. Later on, the police detective uh, gets you in an office with Kai and says, oh, you passed our test. We know you're like not a corrupt cop, so we can put you on this much more serious case. And your character totally goes along with it. Oh, that was a test? Wow, you guys had me going. Really? I didn't buy it for a second. Why does this character who's supposed to be a professional detective immediately think that they're just testing him? It's so blatantly obvious from the start that the police captain is corrupt along with many of the other characters in the game, yet you, the detective, the guy who's supposed to be smart, never really seem to catch on. And then later in the game, after you've been screwed over by these corrupt cops and sent to prison for three years at which time your mom died and you couldn't go to the funeral and basically they screwed over your life one of them breaks you out of prison and all of a sudden you're supposed to trust them and just go along with their crazy plan after they completely ruined your entire life and you're now a fugitive from the law but yeah why not I don't have any other decision so why not team up with the people I hate it really makes me not respect my own character and you don't even like the people that you're teaming up with since they screwed you over in the first place now aside from the character flaws in the writing, there's also quite a bit of mission flaws in the writing that just has you scratching your head like, why is this the mission we decided on? One of the second to last levels you play, you're supposed to be breaking into basically this high security office at the top of a skyscraper. And for some reason, your plan is to blow up a water tank on the top of the skyscraper, which will flood an elevator shaft that you will be waiting in with scuba gear, and then swim up that elevator shaft into the high security office and use the control panel to open the door on the balcony so one of your other team members can get in. One, most elevator shafts have ladders. Do you really need to flood it? Can't you just climb the ladder? Two, you've been using grappling hooks to get around the different missions all day. Why not just grappling up to the top of the elevator shaft? Three, if some guy was able to get onto the balcony using the window cleaner rig, why didn't you just use the explosives to blow open the bulletproof glass on the balcony rather than this ridiculously elaborate plan? Four, the only reason you can't use the elevator to get into the office itself is because it's supposed to have some sort of high security program. You've been using your cell phone to not only see fingerprints and guess passwords the entire game, but you also now have a member on your team who's supposedly a really good hacker. Why not just have him hack into the security system? Now believe me when I say I'm not opposed to over the top crazy action, it just has to make some sort of sense as to why it's going on, otherwise you're just looking at the storyline and the characters like they're a bunch of idiots. Now throughout playing the single player, I kept wondering, is it a fundamentally flawed idea to try and make a high action detective game? It doesn't really make sense on most fronts. I think it would have made so much more sense to have you play a member of the SWAT team. There's plenty of SWAT team characters in the multiplayer game, why not have the SWAT team be the single player aspect of it? Then you would actually have a good excuse for over the top action and big firefights. 
Now maybe my standards are too high when it comes to single player games. I mean, the single player in Battlefield was never the focus of the game, it was always multiplayer, so maybe we should go a little bit easy on it. But personally, I think if you're going to make a single player, you may as well do it right. And I just wasn't enjoying this game the whole time I played it through. Personally, I would have stopped playing this game after Mission 2 because I found the game so boring at that point, I just had no interest in seeing the rest of the storyline. Anyway, that pretty much concludes my single player reveal. Luckily, I didn't buy this game for the single player. I'm all about the multiplayer and I'm still enjoying the heck out of that. I think it's one of my favorite Battlefield games to date. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.